Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Cybersecurity, Cyberattack. Now, we hear about this thing a lot in the press at the moment. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but when you receive a document or uh, something through LinkedIn or a PDF saying, uh, please download this, there's a little bit of caution nowadays. And uh, rightly so, I think. But uh, I'll tell you one thing, when uh, Francis came along to speak at my pinnacle club uh, for recruitment directors, we were blown away by some of the nasty, insidious things that are going on there in the dark web. <laughs> the, the Wild West, I think it is, uh, Francis. Um, and uh, not only that, I mean, Francis, uh, I've used for my own IT services for a number of years now, and he directed me to some really excellent ways to protect uh, my business. Um, but also, he's got incredible knowledge. Some of the simple things he's, he's taught me, um, one of which um, I've just taught my kids, and I'm sure it's a benefit anyway. I hope you don't mind me stealing one of your ideas, Francis. But no, no, steal them to, all. If you get uh, spam coming in um, and you want to unsubscribe, unsubscribe, how about just going into your inbox and searching for the word unsubscribe and then they all come up at once and you can get rid of them all. Uh, really, really simple, effective uh, tip. But more importantly, from a business perspective, I would say Francis is one of the most knowledgeable people in the industry, particularly in the world of recruitment, for protecting us and making our lives easier and more efficient. So I'm really looking forward to today's presentation, Francis, and uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Mike, and, uh, and thank you for, for letting me do another session. I tell you, we work so closely now with uh, local councils, uh, Barclays Bank, Lloyds Bank, also with, with Hertfordshire and Bedfordshire uh, Cyber Police Unit. And also, even last night at the APSCO Awards, I was asked by by uh, NatWest Bank to come and do sessions for them. So, so the more we can do these sessions, the more we can create awareness. And, and thanks to Mike, uh, uh, what we've decided to do is to do three sessions because there's just so much information to share. Uh, so we, we're gonna break it up into three sessions. The first one is where we're just gonna go through and we're gonna tell you about how you can get infected and you know what are the risks out there and then the second one another session all by itself is going to be so what can you do you know if you if you if you walk in on a, on a monday morning or chat or saturday morning or any morning and all your machines have been ransomed and you can't work you know what can you do to to uh to help yourself and then the third session is all about you know how can you protect not only yourself but also your business because a lot of the things that i talk about all the time you know, interlinks the house or the home area with the business. Because years ago, you know, we used to obviously just work um, at, at, at the office and we hardly ever used to work from home. And now we work from homes, we work from, you know, our, our parents' houses, we work from hotel rooms, train stations, anywhere. So in other words, the security risk or perimeter has exploded. And you've got to think about all these different areas that you're working from as an area where you can get uh, a compromise. So, so let's make a start. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is play a, uh, play a quick game because what I always like to do is to see what people's uh, pre predictability is like. So let me show you how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a word on the screen and as soon as you see this word on the screen the very first thing that pops into your brain just either just type it in the chat box if you can and then mike will 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 be able to to give us a summary or alternatively just think it in your brain but don't or even say it out loud so okay you ready we're going to do three of these so one two three go So let's see, how many people guessed this? You see, I bet you a lot. I bet 60 to 70% of people guess carrot. Okay. Fra so Francis, it's hilarious. Yeah? It's hilarious in the chat room. Pretty much, everyone's go pretty much everyone's gone for carrot. You, you, you serious? Yeah. I normally get about 60, 70%. That's funny. So it just shows you how predictable people are. All right. So, okay, you ready? We do the next one. One, two, three, go. All right, I can see a few people posting. So let's see how many people went for. So what 
this here the mic it's about 50 percent in this instance okay okay 50 that's good but it just shows us so in other words our predictability of our audience at the moment is sitting about 65 70 percent okay let's do one last one ready one two three go How many people guessed that? Uh, that's about 30%. We have okay. a few hydrangeas, believe it or not, daffodils. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. about 30% that one. Yeah, I get them quite often. Uh, that's good. No, that's very good. Well, okay, so why am, I, why am I showing you this? Or why am I playing this game? It's very simple. Because if, imagine you are a hacker and you have to guess somebody's password well i've just shown you in in three goes how quickly it is to guess what people are going to say in the first place and sadly most people are lazy and so am i so they they use words in their password that are so easily or or, or maybe one or two ways to guess and and of course or they put it on on facebook and and all over the world on, on social media and then they wonder why they're getting hacked so moving on let me share with you some, some facts and figures. I mean, I, I've got a lot of facts and figures, but some of them are probably going to scare you. But I'll let, let me share them with you anyway. And this is, this is based on the last 12 months, and some of them are even as recent as, as last week. 68% of small businesses in the UK have already been compromised. And, the, and you think that's scary. That's not really scary because it takes on average 237 days before they find out that they've been compromised. And that's the, the concern. Because in other words, a lot of us have already been hacked. We don't know that we've been hacked and we just carry on working as normal. If you suffer a major um, ransomware attack, the average national average in the UK at the moment is, is 10 days of downtime, which is, which is a lot. We imagine 10 days where you can't work. If we look at money, in the last 12 months alone, 36 billion pounds has been lost through cyber related theft in the uk and i believe that that figure is understated because a lot of people and i know some big companies which i won't name that have not declared that they had a major compromise and lost a lot of money so if you put all the other theft together in, in the uk it doesn't come close to 36 billion 91 percent 91 percent of all the tax coming by email and that's why you know, when we when we take over new new businesses uh, from a, from an IT support or security perspective, you won't believe how many times they do not have any external security to their email. So in other words, they're just using Office 365 or Gmail, and they think that that's good enough. The problem is that Office 365 or Microsoft does not check every single link that's inside a, a an email. So of course, if you don't check every single email as it comes in, before it gets to the inbox, before it gets to the user, the chance of getting infected is 91%. So 4%, we know about uh, GDPR fines, that's not going away. Here's another scary one for me. Every four seconds, a new version, where, version of ransomware is being released on the planet. Every four seconds. And this is why sometimes when I do my talks, I say, ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the war. And I'm not joking because as a security company and all the other companies around the world, we are constantly playing catch up, you know, because the new ones are coming out or different variants are coming out so often, all we can do is playing catch up. So, you know, we, I'm going to leave it for another session as to what you can do, but let's pipe it for now. Here's one by Hiscox. I love this one. And I believe this to be true. In the last few months, they've now established that you are nine times more likely to suffer a ransomware attack in your office than a burglary. Can you imagine that? So my advice, a joke, but I say to people, cancel your content insurance. You're wasting your money. Rather go and buy cyber insurance. And it'll be interesting again, if we could do a quick poll, how many people right now have cyber insurance? Anyone you want to post? And I'll tell you, the current, the current percentage that I've seen is 11%. So only 11% of small businesses in the UK, or even medium-sized businesses, have cyber insurance. And I urge you to go and get it, because what, what it, not only is it going to help you with, with putting things back together after the attack, it'll help you deal with your customers and with the ICO and, and all the other organizations that you need to deal with 
you know, once you've, uh, once you've suffered an attack. And, and at the moment, the premiums are low, but the premiums are going up and up. One of the, the partners, security partners, sorry, insurance partners we work with uh, very close to Lloyd's of London, told me last week that in the last 60 days, they have paid out a record amount of money where their customers have ended up paying the wrong people because their invoices were, were hijacked and the payment details were changed. So therefore, the premiums are going up and up. So please go and get insurance. Here's another new one that I found, 30,400. So who's, you know, I talk about internet of things a lot, baby alarms, you know, ring.com, your smart TV, your, you know, everything that connects, even a toaster and, and a fridge. I did a post on a, on a fridge or a hack the other day on LinkedIn. 30,400 new devices are being added to the internet every hour. Now, that's a bit scary because, again, when we do workshops, normally I take people to a, a, a website called Shodan, S-H-O-D-A-N.io. My 10-year-old loves the site, but I promise you, on this website, you will find so many Internet of Things that's been added by this. You don't even have to go to the dark web where you can go online and you can log on to people's video cameras, their games, industrial control systems, because they were never locked down properly. And the problem is people have their internet of things, their smart TVs and the things that they've installed a year ago or two years ago, the, the password is still admin, admin, or admin and password, or admin and no password. So please, after today's talk, go and have a look at these devices and make sure that you've changed the passwords. We did another big security audit for a firm not so long ago. Uh, it was the beginning of the year, actually, uh, and a big, big firm. And we found out that their smart TVs were sending information out, um, you know, into China. And nobody knew. So uh, 19, I'm trying to remember my own stats here, 19 and 54. 54, after 54 seconds, a ransom, imagine an email comes in, you click on a link and that ransom kicks off in the background. It takes 54 seconds before that thing goes stealth. You know, in other words, undetected. 19, it takes 19 minutes on average now to take out an entire network, whether you've got five or 50 or 100 or 500 machines, the ransom can spread and take out or, or encrypt every single machine within 19 minutes. So I joke, you know, and I say, what does WWW stand for? And everybody says World Wide Web. I say, no, Wild Wild West. But you get the point now if you look at these facts and figures. So how can I get infected? You know, there are so many different ways. And, and again, we only have, I think, 15 minutes left looking at the clock. And I, and I can show you maybe we can do that at another session, but I'll show you how easy it is just by a single, single click or single, single link that you clicked on. So here's the current percentages. This is about uh, less than 12 months old, malware. Malware meaning, you know, things that come off from the internet, things that come through the email, social engineer. I'm gonna show you in a video in a minute, you're gonna laugh. I'm gonna show you a video on, on, on how a uh, reporter dared this, this, this company uh, says, ah, you can't get, you can't hack me. Credential compromise, this happens every single day. And that's why I urge people to turn on things like multi-factor authentication, which will cover another session. Web attacks, denial of service attacks, this happens a lot still, but you can see the percentage is right down. Also, if, you, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, you can see in a sick way I really like this because uh, I just think these hackers are making so much money and, and, and for all the wrong reasons. But if you go to uh, securityeverywhere.co.uk, www.securityeverywhere.co.uk, one of our sites, and you go right to the bottom, you will see a real live um, website of, oh, let me show you actually, you can see, you can't make this stuff up. Have a look at this, if you go right at the bottom, this is right now live attacks going on worldwide. And it shows you the countries. I mean, it looks like World War Three, if you ask me. But uh, but that's what's that's what's going on, you know. And this is the kind of stuff that we uh, that we that we have to defend against. And if you if you go down the bottom here and you click on the little links here, you can then look at the different sections, and see what uh, what what really goes on. So, but 
I'll leave that for another time. So let's move on. So how can I get infected? I've already mentioned a few things, but this is where it gets really, really scary or interesting. From a phone perspective, you know, when I do my talks, I ask if people a question, who in the room doesn't have a, a standard phone? And people look at me really puzzled and say, what do you mean? I say, well, who in the room does not have an iPhone? And very few people actually put their hands up. Although, as you know, iPhone is now not the biggest selling phone on the planet. But did you know that a non-iPhone is 400 times more likely to be infected than an iPhone? Why? You know, listen, my engineers love non-iPhones because you can install everything and you can do what you like on them and precisely there's the problem. Whereas with an iPhone, everything is so well locked down. You know, websites, email, we spoke about already, Facebook, only, only two weeks ago, I had a request, you know, like the, uh, what's the messenger request on Facebook. And what this hacker did, he duplicated one of my friend's profiles and he used the same photo and he said, hi, Francis, how are you doing? And so we, we started having a chat and he said, hey, Francis, did you know I've just won 125,000 pounds? I said, oh, that's really nice of you. I thought I was a bit jealous, but I'm like, okay, good for you. And then, I thought, and then he carried on talking and I could hear, this is not the way my friend would be talking, okay? And the next thing he says, would you like to also find a way how you could win 125,000? I'm like, yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. So I played along and he gave me the link to, to click. And I said, I tell you what, I've got another friend who'd really love to win 125,000. So I, I posted the, uh, the link to, to the, you know, the police people that I work with in Harpershire, Sean, and, and I sent in the link and I tell you within seconds, it was so funny, all the conversations were deleted. You know, so he obviously figured out that, that I was on his case. But, but this, you know, so if I clicked on that link and I didn't have the right protection in place, that would have taken out my entire machine or entire network. SMS, you know, I can now send you a single text message and I can take out your phone. Invoices, we talk about um, only two days ago, I helped a lady who, use, who uses zero. And you will not believe it, she didn't have multi-factor or two-factor authentication turned on on zero, which meant that somebody could log on to, if they can put a key logger on her, on a PC or Mac, what will happen is that the next time that person logs on to zero, they can, they can capture the information, then they can log on from Russia or from China or anywhere in the world, change the detail of the invoice or the statements. And the very next time that information goes to a customer, guess what? The customer pays the wrong, the wrong details. Now, I'm not saying that the customer should have checked and make sure the details are right. But my point is the original attack was initiated by, the, by not having good security on your, on, your, um, on your accounts to start with. Phone calls, I've seen people, how you can actually, um, this is all over the news not so long ago, where you can phone, you can phone somebody and as soon as they answer, you can send over an infection onto their phone. I don't know if you saw, was it, uh, what are the, was it not, was it TV series last week, I think BBC, uh, Watch, Watchdog, I think it was, you know, they've got these little sensors, uh, as you walk into the shops, there's a little sensor on top, on the ceiling, and, and it sends a Bluetooth signal onto your phone. And then all of a sudden you suddenly get these pop-ups on your phone to say, oh, you've just been top shop and you, you know, they, they know you're a, a lady and you, you, you're age 23. So it starts telling you what to buy. And I mean, if you can do that just with a little simple uh, uh, transponder to send things, you can hack into the rest of the stuff. Coffee shops, you know, when I say to people, when you sit in a coffee shop, please do not log on to their Wi-Fi, Because if you look at the Wi-Fi. And you see how, when you click on, onto it, it says there very clearly, unsecure Wi-Fi, which means that everybody else sitting next to you, having a cappuccino or having a, a latte can see all the data. If they've got the right tool set, uh, talking about which um, I have purely for demonstration purposes, a pineapple. Now you go and look up a pineapple. A pineapple is a, is a hacking device. And with that, if you, if you know how, you can copy anybody's landing page of a Wi-Fi hotspot, you can duplicate it, save it onto this pineapple device, and all you do is you change the name to dash free. And then 
what you do is when you won't believe how many people log on to the free one instead of the proper one. And from that second forward, every single keystroke that that person is typing on their laptop or their Mac or on their, even on their mobile device that comes through that pineapple is recorded on a memory stick. And then at the end of the, you have to ask people's permission, otherwise they get really wound up when we do this. But, but we have, we've shown people how to do it. USB sticks, this is one of my favorites. So when we do uh, some of the um, workshops that we do for, for our clients, we go in where there's a car park and we print 50 or 25 little USB sticks with a nice logo on and we just sprinkle them between the cars. You cannot make this up. And people will pick up the USB and the first thing they do is they plug them into a PC or a Mac. And what we do, we execute a piece of software on there that reports back to our main office here in Apsley and tells us exactly what's going on on that machine. Now, if we were a black hat hacker, we would have stolen or we would have infected that entire machine. But we do it purely for demonstration purposes to show people how easy it is to, to get infected. My other favorite story, CV, this, this guy, he goes into you know, one of these uh, multi-layer, multi-floor uh, offices in, in London, and he goes to the ground floor, and he walks up to the, to the reception person, and he says, I'm here um, for an interview, but you won't believe it, but I, I, I forgot to, to print my CV out. He says, would you be so kind as to print my CV? It's on this USB stick. And of course, what does a person do? Because they're so nice, they plug in, the, um, the USB stick straight into the computer, prints the CV, gives it to the guy, and he goes, oh, is this company ABC? No, 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 ABC is on the second floor. This is company XYZ. He said, really, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for, for, for uh, of course, uh, printing my CV. So what, is, what, what has he just done? He's just infected that entire network without that, that reception person knowing. Wi-Fi, we talk about this a lot. How many people, let's do another poll if we can, Mike. How many people do not, I'll repeat, do not have a guest Wi-Fi at home? Can we have some honest answers, please? Can you just explain what you mean by that, Francis? Do you mean yeah, so, so in other words, when you, when, you go, when you go home in the afternoon, evening, morning, whenever, and you log on to the Wi-Fi, do you only have the one Wi-Fi name? In other words, let's say West minus West Home. Or do you have a West Home and you've got a, a guest one so that when your guests come, they, they don't log on to your own one? So the question is, how many people have, in other words, two Wi-Fi's at home? One for themselves and one for their guests? Uh, the results in the straw poll are pretty much everyone saying, no, I don't have a separate one. There you go. And that's what I see every single time I ask this question, which is frightening. Okay. And let me tell you why. So imagine this. So you, you are such lovely people. And when your mother, your sister, your brother, your friend, your, your teenager, your sons, friends, and girlfriend comes over, you allow them to connect to your Wi-Fi that's also connected to your every other internet device and it's connected to your laptop that you're currently working on from. And that laptop might be connected by a VPN, virtual private network, straight into your office, wherever that is on the planet. And you, you might as well just give them your data, seriously. Because if I have an infected device, remember what I said earlier, and I'm now connecting to your to your uh, Wi-Fi network, there's nothing but nothing stopping me. I'll give you an example. This is another true story. So what happened here was uh, this, this guy, he goes to his mom because, uh, you know, his printer's not working. He ran out of ink. So he goes to his, to his mom's house and uh, he says, oh, uh, mom, I need to, I need to uh, just print my tickets, please. And, and they try and they try and they try and the printer doesn't work. It's not printing and he's getting all wound up because his time is running out. Eventually, he leaves in a huff and a puff, and he goes to his other mate, and he prints his tickets. The next morning, the nosy neighbor, you know, I'm changing names for the fun of it, but her name is Maria. She comes around. She says, oh, was that your son there last night visiting? Yes, yes, yeah, no, no, he came to visit, but, oh, you know, he was so annoyed because he tried to print his tickets. He's going to Malta today, and, and, and they didn't work. Oh, really? And she hand over 
she handed over the ticket, the printed tickets to him. Now, think about this for a second. He's just printed to the next door neighbor's printer by mistake. Now, if I can print your printer, I can hack into the rest of your network. That's the bottom line. So this is a party trick. Try this at home. When, when you go and visit your friends, go and see if you can print to that printer. Because you'll remember that if you can print to their printer, you can get into the rest of the network, including their, all their computers and all their data. So other ways you can get hacked, you know, phishing, vishing, social. I'm going to show you some videos in a second because I'm talking a lot. Uh, we talk a lot about one unha unhappy staff member, especially in recruitment, well, in any sector for that matter. You know, if I want to take you out, I'll just, you know, I, I can obviously just copy stuff, steal your data, but I can also infect your entire network. For 100 pounds, I'm telling you for 100 pounds, I can take you to a website for 50 pounds, I can, you can buy a ransomware package, and I'll take you to another website. For 50 pounds, you can go and rent a hacker. And then you name me the company for 100 quid, they'll execute whatever you want them to do. I don't endorse this in any way, but I'm just telling you, this is available on the public web. You don't even have to go to the dark web. Francis, that, that, is, that is particularly scary. If it you is. get a disgruntled employee, exactly. in the past, they might just steal your database and disappear, yeah. and then you've got a lawsuit going on. Whereas now, it's a vindictive person could infect you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you think about it worse, if, if somebody wants to kind of do espionage on your system, or they want to steal your data even after they've left, all they have to do is to click on one link, or they have to put in one USB stick into any of the computers. You know, it just, it is that simple. It is so easy. And that's why, again, I don't want to come up with loads of solutions today. That's for the next session. But in the next session, we'll cover all the different ways to, to, to protect yourself. And, and, you know, against, against this unhappy staff member. So, you know, I always say it just takes one click. You know, they're there in my head. There are only three types of people on the planet now. And I'll name them. Ones who have been hacked, ones who have not been hacked, and ones who's been hacked, but they don't know they've been hacked. Only three people. So you've got to see which one you are, and I'm praying that you are sitting in the second one at the moment. So let me show you some, uh, some videos, because I think videos really gets a point across. So the first one will show you, you know, how easy it is for a computer to get infected by a simple click. I mean, how many times do you still get Word documents in? And guess what we do? You know, or even an Excel document, and it says there, um, you know, uh, click enable editing. And then the next thing is, you know, you, you click to enable the button so that you can carry on working. What, watch this, watch carefully. I mean, for the time to take to watch this video is the time it took to, to encrypt all the data on this machine. Watch this. have to go back to your backup problem is with the backups today is how do you know that your backup software has made sure that the ransom wasn't or, or the attack or what i say the infection or the payload wasn't already inside your backups because how far do you roll back then and there's the challenge so let's have a look at another one this is a you know called fishing with a v you know i do a lot of fishing with an f uh, for fun which i enjoy and take my boys but this is fishing with a v i bet a lot of people have never seen this and this is anyway watch this and tell me what you think afterwards we help people with human security 
issues by testing vulnerabilities for, um, for like a network test, but it's for the people network. We test those vulnerabilities, see where the holes are, and then help people learn so they can patch them. Can we try some of this? Can we try some, Yeah. see if it works? Yeah, we, we probably could uh, have our star visher here make some phone calls as <laughs> we're Let's do it. Sure, do you want to do a sample vishing call? What's vishing? Vishing is voice solicitation, and basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my... <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan, and we just had a baby, and he's like, get this done by today, so I'm so sorry, I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information, and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying, and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, Jessica gets my personal email address. Um, now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Okay, my Jessica name. uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number 5127 to set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She I even gets the support daughter. person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just no, basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Holy shit. So they they just gave they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. You can't make this up, can you, Mike? Incredible. Hey, right? it's just yeah. it's mental, and it's so, and this is, happens daily. Uh, uh, you know, one of my favorite party tricks I do in my talks, I use a, 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 an app called Spoof Card. This is an app that you can download for free off the app store, and I can impersonate anybody's number. So in other words, I can phone you from your wife's number right now. You won't know it's your wife not calling. I can text you from your wife, Mike, and you won't know that text wasn't from, from, your, from your wife. So that's why I say to people, listen, when somebody phones you or texts you, how do you know it's them? Unless you're seeing it, or rather phone them back make 100% sure. Anyway, let's move on. I'm just uh, cautious of time here. Uh, how are you doing the time, Mike? Um, yeah, we've got another four or five minutes if you wish. Yeah, but uh, okay, well, what's, what's interesting is that uh, you made us all a bit scared, Francis, I think. Yeah. So that's the first thing. So <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any solutions today or is that coming in the next session? Well, you see, I've got so many solutions, but, uh, but the idea was uh, that's why we're splitting up into three. Okay. Yeah, so, so we look at all the risks today and, and, and how easily it gets done. And then we look at, you know, what happens if you did get, you know, compromised. And then, of course, the third session is all about prevention. How could you stop that from happening? Well, so I, think, today, I think straight away in terms of uh, things like having a guest password for your home. And well, guess, yeah, exactly. You know, um, I think another one you shared with at the director meeting mm -hmm. was um, people charging their mobile phones. In, yeah. in, in, through a USB port. Would you expand on that, please? Well, well, precisely. That's that's what I meant earlier about USB. So, so for instance, you know, like in the same way, if you look at the the Wi-Fi, you know, people come in, and I've seen this so many times, and they, and they go into either your house, you know, imagine you're sitting there with your with your work uh, laptop or your work PC, uh, even your kids one, and then their friends, friend or your mother's sister, brother comes along and says, oh, you know what. I, um, I, I need to charge my phone, but you don't know what's on that phone. So please, I beg you, do not allow anybody to plug any device into any USB port with any cable unless you know what's on that device. And you can't. So therefore, unless you've got good software in place, you will not know. So rather give them a charging point, you know, rather give them, you know, plugs around the wall and say, 
you know, never, ever, ever again should you plug something in because you just, if you do, you just need to take the risk with the same time. Okay. So I've got a, a few more videos that I'd like to share, if I may. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So what? We're so this next one, this is also this is brilliant. Okay. And this is where this guy he, he said, okay, I tell you what, try and hack me. What? Watch this. I'm gonna play you uh, not all of it, but because uh, we're gonna share these these slides out if you want afterwards, Mike. And then people can watch the full video, you know, in, in more detail. But watch this. So what were the first things you did? How did you start hacking me? Uh, I quickly found your Squarespace blog and had an idea. Uh, basically, what I did was created a bogus Squarespace site and sent an email to you, um, a fish asking you to go to this website, run this certificate installer. And I did it because yeah. I'm an idiot. So once you ran that, uh, it gave me access to your computer, and I created several fake pop-ups that looked like system pop-ups uh, that would ask you for your credentials. You didn't even have to have my passwords. No, you gave them to me. I gave them to you. Yeah. So I, I stole your 1Password keychain. That's and 1Password is where I store all my other passwords. So effectively by... And your social security number and your Amex stuff and all your stock trading and bank information. I can send email to everyone in this room as you. I am you right now, if I wanted to be. If my evilness is working correctly, it should actually be taking pictures of your desktop and pictures through your webcam every two minutes. And I have been watching you for about two days now. In oh coffee shops, at your mom's house, on a plane. Here's your editing stuff, there's you like Oh my God, so nervous. this is literally... Every two minutes. Through my webcam. Yeah, through this guy. How badly could you have messed up my life? I could have made you homeless. I could have made you homeless and penniless. How? I, how? How would you make me homeless? Like I have control of. I'm going to stop it there because I I, I want people to watch the full length video. Let me. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story about this this uh, recruitment. This is so funny, but it, this this recruitment owner he had a really good quarter, so he decided to go to to Malta for for a nice uh, two week break with his family. And uh, of course, what's the first thing he did when he got to uh, to Terminal Four? He posts a nice picture of his first gin and tonic. Say, hey, yeah, look at me, look at me. I'm off. You know, I had a really good quarter. I'm off with the family, going to Malta for two weeks. So he's telling the world about this. Now, a week later, uh, Maria, who's head of finance, gets an email from John saying, "Oh, it's really hot here in Malta. We're having a great time. Johnny and you know is having a good time in the pool. Blah blah blah." Listen, you know what? We were I was meant to tell you to pay Westec ten grand deposit because we just we just signed an order to replace all their computers, all our computers, and, and I completely forgot to tell you, can you please go ahead and make this payment? So she goes and makes the payment. Guess what? Ten days later, he decides he comes back at the office and he looks at his bank account and says, Oh, there's a ten grand hole in my bank account. And then he went to Maria and says, so what happened here? It's just no, but you sent me an email to make this payment to Westag. What? That wasn't me. So let's think about this. I mean, she, I tell you nowadays what people say, what do you do? I said, I help people not suffer nervous breakdowns or at least complete meltdowns because this is what happens. And I've, I've seen this twice only in the last eight days. Anyway, so what happened here was very simple. Think about the hacking there. All he had to do was to look at his Facebook account, seeing where he's going to go and what he's doing. And two, he had looked at the, at the About Us page. And instantly, he made up a good enough story for to convince this accounts lady to pay 10 grand to nobody. So, uh, it's, so that's why, again, when, when, when people, I don't want to go into solutions again, but when, when you get a request by email to make a payment, you better double, triple, quadruple check that, that it's a legitimate payment. And don't do it by email. Do it by a phone or WhatsApp or some other secure method. Do not do it by email. So social engineering, I'll play one more video because this is again, almost a, an identical what, what happened to, to, uh, to this woman, you know, that made the 10 grand payment, but it's called social engineering or, or impersonation. So have a look at this quick video. Hi, we're Jasmine. I'm 21 years old. I'm a little bit shy. But if you'd like to turn on your webcam, we could get to know each other a little bit better. Hi, it's Suzanne calling from your bank. Hi, we've had some suspicious activity reported on your account. Yes, I'm going to have to start by taking some security information, please. So, what is your password? 
That's perfect. And can I have the three digits on the back of your card? Perfect. My name is Maisie and I'm 12. I want to meet people my own age. Where do you go to school? Hello. Hi. You don't know me. I'm Roger Melly. I'm an attorney in London and England and you've been named as the beneficiary in a will. I'm going to stop it there, but I want you to, when you get this my slides, please play the full video and share this, you know, with, with, with your kids, share it with your staff so that people can see what, what goes on here and, and that they shouldn't trust. You need to be skeptical. So I always put the slide up because it's, it's, I don't think it's a lie. It, it's just a fact, you know, it's not a question of when, uh, not a question if, it's a question of when. And, and, and that's why we're doing these talks, Mike, because the more we can create awareness and more we can share ways of how people can get it, you know, completely taken down. I, I my, my view nowadays is in the same way of, of a company running out of cash, you can, when you have suffered a ransomware attack, everything stops everything stops, you know, and it's got a, such a long lasting effect on the business and it might never go away. And that's why the more we can do this stuff and share this with people, the better. So really, I'm just, I'm going to stop here now because, you know, in summary, I'd like to think that uh, we've created, you know, giving you lots of, or, or showing you many different ways of, of how people get infected. Uh, and, 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 and I've, I've probably, showing you only a few there are so many different ways but but wow, those, are the, those are the ones that 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 i think people can relate to th thank you francis i think um you have given us some solutions by default by making us more aware and True. the big takeaways for me i didn't know that stat about it's um nine times i think you said nine yeah. times more likely or nine nine yeah. times more money than burglaries yeah, you're, you're, nine, you're nine times more likely to suffer a, 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 a ransomware attack or compromise at your wow. office than a burglary Massive. at your office. Yeah. And then you, goes think, home. you think of everybody who somebody, a candidate says, oh, can I charge my phone? And they plug it in. One of your staff lets them do that in your office. Yeah. Could, could be an infection. Yes. Um, I think the, uh, the home infections through the Internet of Things and, uh, you know, not having that well covered because we've all got mm. work. Uh, things at home which you then take into the workplace put into the network and next thing you know infections so i think yeah. by default you've given us that but i look forward to the next session when we delve deeper into some practical solutions to give it you know better protection uh, thank you once again francis it's been an absolute pleasure as always some really fun things there as well actually even though they're scary they're yeah. actually they're actually one of those things where you go oh wow i didn't realize so i uh, really enjoyed that thank you no you're welcome Absolute pleasure.